Hello and welcome to the Chairpoint Reach Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Elton, today. I'm joined by Sud as always. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, not too bad, Luke. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good to hear, man. I'm Yeah, I'm, I'm doing well, thanks. Doing well. Hey, good. not long now as well. Not long till next year. Yeah, well, we... Is it like three weeks for the yeah. Xbox and then four weeks for the PlayStation now, so... It is. It's exciting times. Mate, I can't wait. I, uh, I, I pre-ordered a couple of the games today. I pre-ordered Spider-Man. Nice. And uh, Assassin's Creed, so... Nice, ahead of the Couple curve. Of, and then obviously I'll probably get Cyberpunk as well when yeah. it comes out. So I'll have three good games to play. Get me through till Christmas, should do. Yeah, sounds like uh, I'll be joining you there, mate, because I think that's exactly the type of games I'm going to be buying as well. So. Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to it. But uh, yeah, we are here today to discuss some gaming news. And uh, the first topic of the day is actually relating to Bethesda and the recent acquisition of them by Microsoft. Uh, Phil Spencer was also talking to Kotaku, I think, or did they report it? I can't remember. No, he was talking to uh, Stephen Totillo. I think he's from Kotaku. So. Right, okay. I think he's a reporter from Kotaku. Cool. And you're our very own reporter today. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. No, exactly, yeah. Am I? Like a football commentator. <laughs> yeah. Ready to report on the game. <laughs> you really do. Hey, it suits you, mate. It suits you. Well, be done. <laughs> got to do what you got to do. You do sometimes, you do. But uh, yeah, so Phil Spencer on uh, answering the questions whether Microsoft needs to bring future Bethesda games to PS5. When asked, is it possible to recoup a 7.5 billion investment if you don't sell Elder Scrolls 6 on the PlayStation? Yes, Spencer quickly replied. Then he paused and also added, we want more people to be able to play games, not fewer people to be able to go play games. So, I mean kind of hinted that yeah we don't need to sell it on well he didn't hint we don't need to sell it on playstation it could be an xbox exclusive but he also yeah. backtracked later in the comments in a way by saying yeah but we yes. want everyone to play yeah i do think though that i mean i'm just going to go to it i've just l- one of the quotes later on where i'll just read it out where he says when i think about where people are going to be playing the number of devices that we had and we have x cloud and pc and game pass on our console base and then and then he says, I don't have to go ship those games on any other platform other than the platforms that we support in order to kind of make the deal work for us. Mm. Now, that says to me, yeah. sorry, Exclusive. PlayStation, <laughs> you ain't getting any, um, I mean, you ain't getting any new Bethesda games, that's for sure. You might, they'll obviously get the ones from this gen carried over, mm. you know, like, you know, the old Wolfenstein games, Elder Scrolls, Fallout games, you know, the what, Fallout 4, the games like that, for example. Probably get Fallout 76, Elder Scrolls Online, because they're sort of online um, kind of games that are carrying over, aren't they? So they'll probably get those. Yeah. And they'll obviously get those two uh, timed exclusive games that Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo. Because mm-hmm. he said he's going to honor those deals, didn't he? So he did. Uh, strangely enough, they'll be first on PlayStation, even though <laughs> it's owned by, by Microsoft. Microsoft which is yeah. so weird. Such a weird thing. Um, but low, I think the next Wolfenstein game, the next Doom game, the next Fallout game, the next Elder Scrolls. I'm afraid uh, if you're a PlayStation fan, it's probably not good news because uh, I don't think they'll be appearing on the next PlayStation. Yeah, so I must admit I'm though, when uh, Microsoft did acquire, well, or they're going through the motions of um, purchasing Bethesda anyway, yeah. I assumed that they were doing so with the intent of making it a Bethesda games exclusive only to Xbox because yeah. that is one thing that they have been criticised this generation for is their lack of good first party title games essentially so i thought they were going out there to correct that and making a massive statement by you know purchasing and acquiring uh, bethesda uh, but a lot of people that thought that it would be on both platforms i, I, f- I, think, I feel like i was in the minority with my thinking yeah well i saw a lot of people sort of on the other a lot of reports from other sort of websites saying that saying like nah we think we still think guarantee that it'll still be on playstation day i, I don't know i mean i do think I, I don't know if you. I do think there's a, there is a certain PlayStation bias in the media in terms. Of, I think because of how popular PlayStation is, especially in Europe, because Europe is PlayStation home, isn't it? Really, mm. it's where it's massive. PlayStation. Uh, I do think there's a certain bias where maybe some reporters kind of didn't want it to be true. If that makes sense, they're trying to report. You know, what I mean, we see this with football, don't we? Stuff like that, where there's certain bias. You know, they kind of 
you know, report in a biased way because it's kind of, happens in journal- it favors journalism. Them or whatever. Yeah, journal. It's just a you know favoritism thing. So I do think there's an element of that. Although maybe some people, because of Microsoft in the past, have been quite like, oh, you think of Minecraft, that's still on PlayStation. When you know, you know if they really wanted to, they could take it off PlayStation. True, but they don't. So maybe they thought it's going to be another situation like that. But I agree with what you said first of all. I think the biggest criticism now with xbox they kind of have sorted everything else out now haven't they Mm -hmm. they've sorted out their services they've sorted out the hardware some of the things that were wrong from the xbox one like there's none of this connect rubbish or anything like that anymore been praised for being pro consumer as well quite a bit exactly you know so the one last thing they've got to sort out or you know had to sort out was the first party games which we know were were weaker i think objectively weaker to be honest than playstation i don't think that's really you know a controversial thing to say so yeah, you're right. You know, they had to get more exclusives. And I think Phil Spencer's alluded to this before, saying that, you know, yeah, I, I've heard loud and clear that, you know, first party needs to improve. And there's no doubt these it will was, improve. Well, these are definitely steps in the right direction. I mean, I mean they've now got 23 titles, first party these. studios as well. The 23, that is a lot of first That party is a studios. lot. How many did Sony have? I think Sony have got like 11 or 12. Right. So almost double Yeah. what Sony have got. Now, I expect Sony will probably pick up a couple of studios this generation. <clears throat> you know, maybe just to sort of bulk up their first party a bit. But in general, you know, Microsoft have got the upper hand now when it comes to output, you know, if they want to, uh, can obviously. They, can it result in the delivery, quality though? is the difference. Yeah. That's the, I, I, I don't know about you. I'd still back Sony to win on the quality front, personally. Well, um, we can only go off what we've recently experienced. And yeah, I'd agree with that statement. But, you know, we never know. In a couple of years' time, it could change. And, you know, Bethesda... To be fair, Bethesda have been waning a little bit, haven't they? I'd say in the last few years. Well, the Fallout 76 didn't help. <laughs> Fallout 4 started it really, didn't it? And then Fallout 76 and a few of the other games just have been a bit hit and miss, haven't they? Mm. So, you know, obviously they've had some success as well. Obviously Doom Eternal, you know, great game, well-received game, sold well. So they've had some good hits as well. But I think this is good. For, I, I think it's just a good purchase for all sides, to be honest. I think it's good for Bethesda because they were waning a bit and this will hopefully, back, financially, they'll, they should be have no problems now. Well, they're owned by Microsoft to have unlimited money, basically. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, I guess it's, yeah, they it's do, close. Though, I mean, aren't they like the second or third richest company in the world, basically, based off you know maybe mm. like Apple or something like that? I don't know. Amazon, Amazon, maybe an yeah. Apple. Oh, they're, they're right up there with them too, aren't they? The big three, basically, the juggernauts. Mm. So the juggernauts, a trillion dollar company, almost. capitalism. Yeah, but, well, they're, 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 they're basically all trillion dollar companies, aren't they? Almost mm-hmm. so. Yeah, they've got unlimited resources. If, really. if you had to put your neck out then and say, you know, someone, well, I'm asking you right now, will it, yeah. will the next Elder Scrolls appear and next Fallout appear on PlayStation, or will it be an Xbox exclusive? Where are you leaning towards at the moment? I think I think they'll be Xbox exclusives. Yeah, or well, they'll be X, they'll be on PC as well, obviously, mm-hmm. but they'll be. Microsoft exclusive. Them? Microsoft exclusive, if you want to call it that. So any, yeah. you know, you, basically to play any of those games, you will either have to play on your Xbox, on your mobile, or on your PC through, you know, through the Xbox app or Game Pass or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So, I, um, oh my so god, the they're going to be first yeah. day release, aren't they, on Game Pass? Well, that's what's great about this. Yeah, I think great. from a consumer point of view, you know, and one of the, re- oh, well, I don't know, maybe the same for you in a way, but one of the reasons I'm not just getting a PS5 is because. I know there's going to be games on Xbox now as well that I want to play and I don't want to miss out on. So I was, you know, I don't want to miss out on the next Elder Scrolls. I don't want to miss out on the next Fallout or Doom or what Wolfenstein. They're all games that I love. So, you know, for me that would be terrible to miss out on them. So, yeah, I think it's, and I think a lot of people will think like that. To be honest, I think a lot. I think it will persuade some people to maybe not make the shift over permanently, but at least buy a Series S or get Xbox a secondary console, which I don't think they they care about at all as long as you're playing on their system. Yeah. Well, that that is definitely true. Yeah, as long as you're in the ecosystem and a part of that family. Yeah, because they they they've said before they don't care if you buy the new Xbox, do they? They don't actually care as long as you have part of the family. Some sort of Xbox, (laughs) or you're in Game Pass. Yeah, exactly. Which um, you know, it's an interesting position, isn't it? They've definitely Mm. changed their stance in the recent years. I've actually got a question for you now. Actually, just uh, what do you think in the future? Then we say like these games won't appear on PlayStation. Well, what about in a few years' time? Do you think there's any possibility that we could ever see a Game Pass on PlayStation console? Or do you think PlayStation will resist that for as long as possible? 
So Microsoft having Game Pass, Game Pass on, on PlayStation. PlayStation. Jeez. So obviously PlayStation would have to agree to that. So. Yeah. I, I don't would they know. do that or? But if that was the case, wouldn't it defeat the? Wouldn't it defeat the well, purpose of having an Xbox? Because you're gonna get first party releases then that are Xbox on Game Pass. On your on well, your it, PlayStation, so it wouldn't wouldn't need an Xbox then, would you? Well, the thing is, I don't think Microsoft would care. I th- this is the point. Mm. Like, if 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 you can put, yeah, but they'd Game lose Pass out on, on money, PlayStation they? if from people buying consoles. But I know that Game I don't Pass think they subscription care about would go up. Yeah, I think um, I don't think they care about console sales anymore. I really think that if they could get away with it, I think they'd not have a console. I really do think they'd just have Game Pass on every device. Really. Yeah, I think they'd have it on Nintendo Switch. I think they'd have it on... I mean, that's another, you know, Switch. Will Nintendo Switch get it? I, do you think that's maybe more likely? Maybe Switch? I swear they're more friendly than Nintendo. Re- I swear we reported on something yeah. last year as rumors, to do wasn't with there about Switch it. and Game Pass. Mm. Yeah. Um, because so he may be on there first. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Um, they've also... Microsoft got that weird deal with GameStop in America at the moment, haven't they? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I mean, that's supposed... To, yeah. I did see something like that's supposed to be about sort of getting more good PR, isn't it? And mm. when people come to the store, that they're kind of saying, oh, have you seen the Xbox? And Play like the that. Xbox, please. Because they get percentage yeah. you know, as well, even online. online yeah, sales. I saw that. Um, well, I've seen sales. a lot. I, I, I see a lot of people saying, though, that this is only an American thing. Maybe they should try and do this in Europe as well, because Europe's one place where they need to try and break expand. into more well yeah expand would be the PlayStation better word just dominates europe so i mean but going back to the game pass thing surely playstation are just going to focus on their ps now and trying to improve that well you think so wouldn't you i mean obviously playstation it's it's weird with playstation though because you do get the feeling that they don't really care as much about playstation now do they mm. their main focus is on their first party output selling consoles that basically playstation in a lot of ways and i'm not saying this in a derogatory way but they're kind of stuck in the past in terms of the, they're more traditional now. They're, they're the more traditional one, aren't they? They're doing the traditional, like, you sell the consoles, which sells the games, which gets us money. Mm-hmm. Whereas Microsoft's model is the model that Google are trying to do now on Amazon. But the difference is that Xbox and Microsoft are in a much better position because they already have an established name, don't they? Xbox is established with gaming. It is. And they already have this software. You know, Microsoft software, I mean, you can't really ask for anyone better, can you, to be honest? And they're not charging you know. subscription-based and then no, having exactly. to pay full price for the game. No, no like Google are. Now, I, I think the Amazon Loom, is it Luma, Luma, whatever it's called, Amazon Whatever Luma, it's called. Like that. Yeah. Now, I think, I, don't, I think they're doing it slightly different to Stadia, so maybe they'll have a bit more success than Stadia, but... Well, Crucible just, didn't go well, did it? No, that's true, that didn't go well for them. That was a, that was a bit of a disaster and it's been shut down now, hasn't it, basically? It has. Shutting down, so... But I do feel like Amazon might have a bit more success than Google because I, I feel like if Amazon can somehow incorporate it into their subscription service, that's a lot of customers you might potentially have if you're Amazon. Well, you're on about because Prime. a lot of people have Prime. And yeah. if they can somehow get it into that, maybe bump the price of Prime up a bit. Mm-hmm. But I, I think a lot of people would go for that because a lot of people have Amazon Prime now. It's getting more and more popular. Actually, I think it's... Netflix is the one that seems to be suffering in that space now, doesn't it? A bit more. People are kind of shutting off from Netflix and moving towards Amazon Prime and other services like Hulu and stuff like that. So mm. maybe is... Amazon can have a bit more success. I mean, Google Stadia, they're going to have to completely remodel. Hey, we need to be careful. Last time we slated Google well, Stadia, it's terrible. <laughs> Got a lot like, of I'm fun. sorry, I'm not having it. Like, no one can, you know, I don't want to rile people up, but at the end of the day, can you? Can anyone really? In the case, so anyone else come in the comments and really tell me, tell me what the point of Google Stadia actually is compared to the others? What's the point? What is the point in having Google Stadia? There's no point. There's just more advantages on every other one. Every I, other I service agree. <laughs> that's similar. There's just no like. And I get that there's like Google fanboys. I get that. Like there's fanboys of Apple and so like, fine. But you know, objectively, come on. Like, mm. if anything, I don't even want Google Stadia to go away. I just want them to improve. Just improve yeah. your service because it's not competition at the minute, is it? Because it's just it's well, it's more expensive. Failed. It works out more expensive. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. There's lag, yeah, input lag. So what well, it will what be you, with any streaming, you know? It, yeah, with any streaming service, exactly. But what are you bit. actually gaining from it then? When you can just I, buy the next generation console? Exactly, and 
but even like if someone said to me now, well, you can only choose between Amazon and Google, I'd definitely choose the Amazon option. Would you? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. I must admit, I haven't looked into the Amazon one. Yeah, I haven't looked into loads, but it looks like the way they're doing it is a lot, just a better way of doing it Mm. than Stadia, to be honest. But I guess time will tell on that one. But hey, uh, a favorite of the podcast, time will tell. (laughs) Yeah, but uh, let's take it back then to Bethesda because they actually been quite Bethesda heavy this week with news. Probably my favorite story from the week, really, because it's actually something that is gaming related and you know properly gaming related and something that might help you know help us or i don't know uh it should benefit us all benefit us i guess you should say yeah in the future so and that's the um news about starfield and apparently it, it features an overhauled bethesda animation system uh and you know this news comes from games radar who who say that the news comes from some eagle-eyed linkedin users who spotted that bethesda animator eric braun briefly wrote about the game on his page under his experience section braun is listed as a senior programmer for bethesda in Maryland, and where he rewrote animation system for Scott Starfield from scratch. Mm. So, yeah, and they go on to say that if you're a little tired of looking at the same animations in Bethesda games in general, from the likes of Skyrim, Fallout, and Fallout 76, then this certainly is welcome news. Oh, mate, 100% so, is. And, and, well, also it says in here that you might recall that in September, Todd Howard actually did reveal that both Starfield and the Elder Scrolls 6, they were all overhauling the engine, so... About time. Thank goodness for that. How many? How many to years say. too late is that? Five years too late, at least. Yeah. Because I feel like Fallout Four probably should have had the first benefit of this. And uh, yeah, I probably agree. Actually, it was the same engine. Pretty. I mean, they impro- obviously it was yeah, they improved on the engine from like Fallout New Vegas and Fallout Three, but and Skyrim, but it was essentially the same engine. Pretty yeah, much. they were limited with it. Yeah, I mean, so and it's been the same engine for like. I don't know, at least eight to ten years, if not longer. So it's, yeah, it's a good. I, I'm glad they're doing this because I think they have to as well. I, you know, we don't want to be seen Starfield and then come across those same wooden Fallout or Skyrim faces, do we? Come on, no. like enough's enough, really. Because even, um, you know, even the Outer Worlds, like I wouldn't say its animations were like spectacular, but they were definitely better than <laughs> Fallout's and Elder Scrolls. You know what I mean? So. Mm. They have more personality, the characters about them because the animations and stuff. So if if they can do it, then Bethesda on a much bigger budget now, especially with Microsoft behind them, yeah, can definitely do it. So I'm, th- I'm looking forward to this now. You know, I think this is news that every fan wanted to hear, really, didn't they? Of Bethesda Absolutely. Fan and Fallout and Elder Scrolls, Absolutely. Fan because you just getting tired of the same old bugs and the same old things happening and then i mean they used it again for 76 and we know what a mess that was and when did 76 mm. come out was that 2018 e- i think it was i think it was 2018, 2018 i think yeah i think it was 2018 yeah someone can correct me if i was wrong but even then they're still they were still using the engine it's like oh my god can we just yeah can we move on you need to advance with the times and thankfully now they are it would seem and yeah, good and got because a... I want to. I, I want to see a good space game. So mm. even better than it's going to come in this genre. Well, I mean, the rumors are it's twenty twenty one as well. This game maybe late twenty twenty one, which is music to my ears because, especially with this news as well about it. You know, it, it really makes me excited for the game. I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't want to be like too pressurizing on it comparing it to Mass Effect, but I'm going to anyway. I want it to basically be a new. You know, I want a new Mass Effect. So, uh, if yeah. we're not going to get a new Mass Effect, I mean, that's while, high expectations. And let's be honest, we're not going to get a new Mass Effect for a while because we know that you know they're working on uh, Bioware, or working on Dragon, Dragon Age, Age yeah. and they're still messing about with Anthem and stuff like that. So you're looking at probably four or five years to get another Mass Effect at least. So, if we're not going to get Mass Effect, I want a Mass Effect light game and mm-hmm. Starfield. You know, a little bit like Outer Worlds. I mean, I guess it's maybe you know Outer Worlds was kind of. It wasn't like Mass Effect, really, but it, at least it had that space. It, it gave you that sort of space feeling, which I like. So it did a game but, I um, couldn't get into. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. but one I probably need to get around to. But if, if yeah. Starfield is the Mass mm. Effect um, sci-fi, uh, what's the word we're looking for? What do they say about Star Epic. Wars? Yeah, there's a word yeah. they use. I can't think of. Yeah, I guess, but oh. I can't think of it. It's like this: the story-driven, anyway. Yeah space adventure then i'm all there for it and, mm. and that's exactly what i want is exactly what you want and i'm sure many exactly. people do but mass effect is that's uh high goals mate that's that's I a mean, lot of pressure you might be disappointed I mean, yeah, I 
Yeah, but this is Bethesda we're talking about. This is a studio that's made games like Skyrim and Fallout 3 and, you know, it's, you know, this is the same as, you know, studio, it's that development studio that's going to be working, you know, Bethesda Softworks that's going to be that made Fallout 3 and Skyrim that are going to be working on this game. So my expectations are high because they've made two genre-defining games in the past. Mm-hmm. You know, as much as we laugh at, like, especially Skyrim for, like, the, you know, the amount of times it was remastered and, you know... <laughs> Horribly. It, there's a reason why though, isn't there? Because it was a great game. It was a successful game and people loved it. So. They they milked that all yeah, the they way. Did, and you can see why, because it was so successful. Yeah, don't play it on VR it well. though. If anyone's listening, do no, not play no, on no, VR. It's not the best experience. <laughs> oh my god, it's disgusting. But the game itself's great. I mean it's I loved it. So um Yeah, that, that's why my expectations are high because why not have that pressure of sort of be the next Mass Effect or maybe I am pressurizing them too much, but I, I just want to see it. I just don't want you to set too to too high expectations in your mind. True, because then you're going to be disappointed. Like, because if you've got mm. it, the levels of Mass Effect, I mean, it's one of your favorite franchises yeah, of all is. time. Ever franchises, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. It's too high. I I, I won't aim that high. Um, it would well, be nice, hopefully. but I'm not going to have that expectation. Well, hopefully, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get Mass Effect next year anyway with the trilogy. Hopefully, so ah, the remaster. Oh wait, honestly, I, I might be more. <laughs> this is really bad. I might be more excited for that than any next gen game. <laughs> well, at this moment so in time, which is I stupid, am. really. I mean, that that shouldn't be the case. Looking forward to a remaster from two generations ago, but I really, for so, I just genuinely want to play those games again with like better frame rate. Yeah, because how bad were the frame rates on like Mass Effect One? Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, but it was what two thousand six, seven. Shoot, it was terrible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying though. But I want to play them again with you know look that look better and play better and oh it'd be so mm. good so the menus not take like the menus being slicker and them lift rides taking like five seconds instead of two minutes by the way uh rip the dream of october because yeah, it looks that's like that's in, done <laughs> i i i, I, I mean we're going off on a tangent here but i still believe n7 day it's going to get announced i mean it would make I, I, I the most so. markable sense yeah i um, think it's going to get announced for my prediction is March 2021. Solly March day. I don't know. I reckon. I don't know. Um, March. And can I just say my prediction is that I think Starfield will come out next winter as well. Next holiday. Okay. October time. Something like that. Yeah, I can go with that. Wow. Mm. My, Mass Effect remaster and Starfield in the same That'd year. Be great could year be a for great space year. games. Yeah. Oh man, mm. I just... When I think now about the remaster, just oh, I'm the same as you. I can't wait to play it. And we, mm. we on the podcast, have said many times, like why are they, why do they do so many remasters? Mm. Uh, we want fresh content, fresh games, fresh ideas. And here we are saying that one of the <laughs> things know, we're looking forward to know, before the next gen is a remaster. Yeah, but you don't rain remasters of games that are amazing. Like it's different when it's a game that you love, isn't it? True. I remember when uh. The Final Fantasy X remaster came out on PS3 and 4. Mm-hmm. I couldn't wait to play it. I was like, yes, I just want to play it. I don't care if I've played it like 10 times before. I just want to play it again like, on new hardware. You know, I loved it. So it's like, it's, it'll be the same with Mass Effect for us too. So Mate, I just want could, to play them again. And- could you imagine? I know this this will never happen, but imagine if the remaster, they were like, oh yeah, and by the way, guys and the fans, we sorted out the ending. We've sorted it's out the end of yeah. It's not going to happen, but can could you imagine? Uh, what I'm because it'd be a remake is, then. But well, well, what I'm holding out hope for is that they've done something to the combat system in one. That to me will be the best thing they can do. I don't care about if they change the ending or not. Fine, whatever. We'll just have to accept the Mass Effect ending. If the combat's but like the combat it is in system, two, yeah, already, but, man. but even if it is the same as in one, just maybe they've done something to it to make it a bit more playable. You know, mm. even if they can't completely overhaul it, just something so that it's. At least a bit smoother, you know. I tell you, I tell you what I take. I hope so. I would love it. Um, love the. Oh my god, I can't even remember. But the the guns, I don't want them overheating. That's what I mean. Just <laughs> like, yeah, give me ammo like clips, <laughs> like in two. That, 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 well, that's what I'm saying. Even if they can't completely over, just little things like that will definitely improve the experience. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, <sighs> I'm hoping as well because they. Have, I mean, apparently they've had to delay. It was due to like COVID, wasn't it? Why they had to delay it. Which is understandable. I understand that. You know, originally it was going to release sort of maybe around now, and they had to delay it. Uh, we could have been I'm playing hoping, it right, right now. I mean, that is probably true, but I'm also hoping they've delayed it, thinking, ah, eh, we need a bit more time with this game to make it truly special. Because I really, you know, EA are not in the good books for a lot of people at the minute. No. Um, you know, the handling of 
certain games that we play, like FIFA and stuff, you know, it's testament to that. But, um, and just other things as well, they've been in the news with microtransactions and I know they're kind of stirring away from that a bit more now, but... Oh, they'll do something else. <laughs> give, give it a few know, moments, they'll do something else. If they, if they can deliver this trilogy, remaster it, please, it's, just, it's a win for them, isn't it? I think I've and mentioned it. It is sales, it's money, which is what they love. And pre And, yeah, essentially, essentially, because the fan base is there and craving it again, oh. I think, and... The, I've mentioned it before, this would re- give the fan base a chance to rekindle their love for Mass Effect. Exactly, before you go for the next game in a few years, two, two or three years' time, whenever it is, four years' time. Mm-hmm. It's and perfect all, chance. All EA need to see, though, is the money size, don't they? Yeah, I mean... The remaster sells well, they're going to be pushing for a new game. Mm. Because yeah, I know Andromeda absolutely. probably failed on that aspect for them. So Yeah, and I, I get the impression a new Mass Effect game will stay away from Andromeda, personally. I think, with that, I think that saga's dead. Mm-hmm. Personally, I think shame. <laughs> unfortunately, because I think it was an interesting start. Yeah, shame it's not called you Suds know. Andromeda, but there we are. There <laughs> we are. Suds Andromeda two in a couple of years. Gonna it be. could have been, mate. That's what yeah. we should make. Suds Andromeda. Yeah, me and you. <laughs> <laughs> From, uh, the shit is publisher, game publisher and developer checkpoint reach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> developer, like Jesus, a, how buggy would that game be? Just like an eight-bit, like terrible flash game, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. even know if I can make that. Nah, I couldn't make any game like that. To be no. Honest. So uh, props to those you developers out there. Oh yeah. Definitely. But um, yeah, let's. Uh, you mentioned EA and how bad they are. Oh. Let's move on to the last topic of the day because a company that's definitely rival them these days in my book is Two uh, K. Yeah. Because they've been in the news again with some controversies. 2K Games responds to NBA 2K21 or 2-1. What do you what do you call it? 21? I don't know why I said 2-1. 2K21, yeah. Yeah, 21. 2K21. I don't know why I said 2-1, but there we are. 2-1. <laughs> um, this is in reference to the uh, in-game ads. In-game yeah. ads. The game, re- the game on next gen is going to be like 70 quid. <laughs> and it's got in-game oh, ads yeah. like it's a mobile game. Just greed it. I mean, it's just greed at the, high, the high, highest order. Yeah. I mean... You know, because the thing is, right, just quickly on this, they, this is, again, a bit of a tangent, but anyway, I think it's necessary for this conversation that, you know, these games going to 70 quid, like, I I do get it because there's no doubt inflation. Games in the past 10 years haven't gone up with inflation, so they've been, you know, $60, 40 quid, haven't they? Mm-hmm. 50, whatever 50 quid you want to say for a long time now. So I do get it. I get why they're going up a bit. You know, I get it, but... You know, with that ten pound, ten dollar increase, I mean, it's fifteen to twenty pound in the UK at the times, isn't it now? Mm-hmm. Which is scandalous, to be honest. With some of the games, you look at like Demon Souls, like sixty five, seventy quid, a ridiculous price, a ridiculous price. But you want to see an improvement there. If I'm going to pay an extra fifteen, twenty pound for a game, I, I, I don't want to be seeing in game adverts because <laughs> I'm, I, you know, I'm, that's why I'm paying another fifteen, twenty quid not to see stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like when you go when you pay for is it YouTube Premium? Yeah, you don't get, you get, you don't get ads. There's a reason why you pay the what is it five a month? Whatever it is, whatever it is. I don't Please know don't tell me is, you but... pay for that. No, 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 I don't. I'm just I always <laughs> say advertise. Good, right? Oh no, 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 of course I don't. But you always say advertise, don't you? Like oh, you know, YouTube Premium, whatever it is a month. Mm-hmm. And it's like yeah, but if I was going to pay for that, I'd, I'd pay for it because I don't want the ads. <laughs> I'm paying money, so if I'm going to buy NBA next gen, I'm not. I don't want to have to pay an extra ten pound and then find that well. Oh look, there's ads in it as well. Like, come on! Man. Why are they in? Inco- why are they Tone treating death, it like it? a? To me. Well, it Tone is, death. but why are they treating it like it's a mobile game? It's not free to play this game. <laughs> so I why think are you it's because they see it like a bloody mobile game now. To be honest, they see it as like a bloody, you know, a game that they can just cash cow off. Because yeah, let's be honest, yeah, NBA. To be fair, I will say, well, I, I will usually say, like the know, games as well. Yeah, they're, they're, they're fun games to play, and all that. I understand they co- They definitely got a level of quality. However, you know. I seem to remember the problem is I seem to remember saying this about FIFA in like FIFA 34. Oh, they've still got a level of quality, and then look how quickly that about dropped off a cliff, of mate. And now it's like I I actually do think FIFA 21 is a bit better than FIFA 20, but that's not saying not much, much it. it's but not it's right. Much you're right. Yeah, it's a little bit better, but it's I mean essentially the gameplay is not that much different. So essentially, it's, it's just a reskin every year, isn't it? And like updated drafts, uh, drafts, updated yeah. um, teams, exactly. And to be and fair, like I, I mean, we did look at them comparisons, didn't we? And the PS5 version looks really good on NBA. It does look great. Yeah, right? it did. It did look really good. It looks a massive step up from the PS4 version. So okay, the, the extra money's going there. Good, that's good. Mm-hmm. But there's still no excuse to be seen advertisements mm-hmm. in the game, and certainly not ones you can't skip. <laughs> like at least <laughs> let me, you know, YouTube even lets me skip ads, mate. 
Oh, you tell me NBA can't let me skip it. You know the game. Can't for them skip not to be sk- un- for them to be unskippable is just. I mean, it's unacceptable for them to have ads in the first place. Don't take the piss. I, I mean, mean look, they, they definitely did, shouldn't it, have. It, this This is what they've gone on to say, yeah, though, 2K. Yeah. I, th- in their def- in their defence. Yeah, in their defence. <laughs> the ad placement impacted our players' experience in a way we didn't intend. Ads were not meant to run as part of the pre-game introduction, and that issue will be fixed in future episodes. However, this article does say, it's worth noting that 2K Games has not confirmed that it will be removing ads from the game altogether. Instead, the publisher noted that in recent years, ads have been integrated into the 2K TV segments. Mm. now i played 2k because it was uh, the last one 2k20 because it was on game pass so yeah i'm assuming that the 2k tv segment is that bit when it's loading and they and you've got oh, the yeah, little right. yeah i played tv as well. you got the I little tv little during loading yeah, yeah i remember it. i'm assuming that's I don't where know. Well, be. maybe but yeah was there ads in that i can't remember no i thought it was just the 2k tv like well they did a good job mini then. show thing Maybe they did a good job of hiding them because I don't remember seeing them much, And interacting but... with community. That's why. But it seems like they've become more egregious than this one. Mm. Now, it seems like they're more on show and like you, like you said, literally can't skip them. But they have said, haven't they, that obviously that was an error. <laughs> it's an error. Because it of backlash. Like, that... It just wasn't an error Mate, at all. That... No one believes that. What that's, Who believes is, that? That, what, what that's called is testing the waters. Exactly. Do... exactly. Oh, We've seen if this we before. push this in, will people kick off uh, oh, they did. Uh, sorry, guys. Yeah, it was a mistake. Can I just say, mean... right, how many times on this podcast in the last two years or so have we seen stuff, we've reported on stories like this where it's like, oh, it was an error. Mm. Like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> maybe like one of the, yeah. maybe one out of like 10 of the stories we report on was a genuine error. The, the other nine weren't. So I'm not believing this one. So no. it wasn't an error. It's to test the waters, see how far you can go with it. The players aren't happy with it, understand. And thank goodness they're not. They haven't just accepted it. And, they're still they're not taking the ads out. No surprise there, but at least you can skip them now. So that's something. But mm, I just don't agree with, with the ads at all. I just think it's ridiculous. You know, even on FIFA, is there advertisements on FIFA? I don't think. Don't so. Don't think so. Unless I'm. There might be advertisements no. for like their own stuff, like Ultimate Team and stuff. Like that, or go yeah, to the website, but that's fine because that's to their own products. Like, Mate, EA will be I watching this like, though, thinking, "Good idea, 2K. Oh, did yeah, it work? Probably. Oh, oh, it didn't work. Okay, we won't yeah. try it yet. We'll implement it soon though." Is there a free upgrade for NBA 2K21? Don't know. I don't know. No, there is no. with FIFA. There is with FIFA. I, I wonder whether there is with... I feel like there probably is, but I don't know. I won't be I'd buying the game is. to find out. I tell you what, I hope there is. No, no. You're not going to go for NBA this year. Nah. You're going to wait the for it to... Well, the only Maybe reason... If it goes on Game Pass or something. Yeah, the only reason I played it last year was because of Game Pass. I do like yeah. playing them because sometimes I just get mindless fun out of them. But I never buy them full price. Actually, I did no. once... I did once. Yeah. I bought NBA 2K 14 or 15. Right. Cause I, and the only reason I remember buying it full price because I went to game and they, and they gave me a cap with it. Oh, uh, right. Okay. An NBA 2K cap. Was it when it just came out? Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What a waste of money. Looking I'm back. assuming that was probably a time when there was nothing to play or something. You probably just thought, oh, I'll just pick up NBA. Probably. But nowadays, I'll just wait for it to go down yeah. in price. We'll come on Game Pass if it does. Yeah. So, but they they've yeah, got to be up there I mean, with EA these days. Their microtransactions I mean, are terrible. Yeah, they are bad. Two Ks. I mean, yeah, yeah, they're not good, and I just don't think they're going to improve. To be honest, anytime soon, by the looks of it. No, I mean people still buy the games, so. Yeah, and uh, be interesting to see though if they have it. I will be interested to see their sales. I mean, if they release it, but their sales data are on. The next NBA game on PS5 and Xbox Series X specifically, because mm-hmm. you know with that increase, will players be put off by it or will people still buy it? It'd be interesting to see. I think players will still buy. Mm, I, I disappointingly agree with you, but we'll see. Maybe there will be a drop off, and maybe they'll have to reconsider their pricing. But it does seem, though, to be honest, that <laughs> a lot of the, I know, like games like I think it's Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs, they're not putting their price up too much, are they? I know they 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 did say Ubisoft they're kind of sticking with the. 45 to 50 pounds sort of mark that mm-hmm. most of the games are now uh, for next gen which is good you know that's a good sign but then you know Sony obviously they're putting their game prices up aren't they I mean Demon Souls is the cheapest I think I found it for 65 pounds how much you pay for Spider-Man 50 50 which is an I mean to me that is an increase because the game's supposed to be yeah it's like a halfway game isn't it is it 50, 60 dollars 50 dollars something like that so mm. 
that game really should be about 35 40 but it's gone to 50 but I, i'm willing to pay it because spider-man's you know i think it'll be a great game but demon souls at 65 pound I mean, that's just mate i was just thinking I was, alarm, I was talking to my girlfriend the other day because she's not much of a gamer as you know and, and she was just asking me about the next gen stuff and uh, i was like yeah you know consoles decently priced decently priced mm. yeah yeah but but then she asked about the games, and I was like, "Well, that that is where a lot of your money is going to go because That's where, yeah. if you want two games, you're spending like 140 quid well, between 120, 140 quid." Especially for Sony, because we actually don't know what Xbox are doing with their next gen pricing because it doesn't really matter as much because they're most of their games they're not relying on physical game sales; they're relying on Game Pass. So whether their games go up or not, I don't know. But with Sony, we know they are because they're selling that PS5 digital, the one you're going to get at a mm-hmm. big loss. Yeah. <laughs> big loss that is a big loss for a console that power in it so they have to make up the money somehow i guess and i don't know it depends would you rather have paid 500 for the console and the games were 60 dollars well you're talking dollars so what's that 50 quid 55 quid yeah or would you rather have the increase it's a difficult one to say really isn't it well it's more difficult because like you touched on with xbox i bought a cheaper console in the series s and game pass what's game pass a tenner a month well, yeah, we're both doing the same thing. I'm just going to pay the yeah. £10, £11 a month. So I think it's so. £10 at the moment. So 120 quid for the year to play yep. the games and the, all their first party titles that come out. That's saving money. So that's that's yeah. essentially cheap. So if I want to pay that, I'm, I don't get two games off from the PlayStation yeah, side. that's the problem. That's the problem. And I'm going, to buy, I'm going to buy more than two. <laughs> so mm. I guess uh, the only good thing is that yeah. a lot of the games you play will be third party games, which hopefully some of their prices won't go up as much mm. but we'll see I mean with 2k have said their price are going up so will others follow suit that's the question I know Ubisoft said for now didn't they their prices aren't going up but will they go up next year when the likes of Far Cry come out and stuff like that I, I, I think they're going to wait and see yeah I do as they'll, well. they're probably going to see sales aren't they see yeah if it's they'll use that sales up. as the analytics I, to see should we bump up ours as well or God, should so we I, I do get the impression that Assassin's Creed Watch is going to sell really well because, to be honest, there's not much... I mean, it's launch. Games always sell well at launch, don't they? They do. Because people just go, oh, I need a game to pick up, and there's not that many... Okay, there's like Cyberpunk, there's like some of the PlayStation exclusives. There's not that many games available So no. at launch. So I get the feeling Ubisoft, it might, you know, they might see... This will be the first... Well them. This will be the first time I'm buying an Assassin's Creed game since, yeah. um, since 3. And I've got to be honest, I'm probably going to pick up Watch Dogs maybe around Christmas time as well. So yeah, I was tempted to play Watch Dogs, but I don't. I don't know if I like the. Uh, I, I'm the gonna, anyone. Uh, well, I'm not going to have it play it straight away. I'm going to Christmas game, I think, for me. Yeah. For Watch Dogs, yeah. Get the get the family to buy that one for you, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't. You know. So. Yeah. I'll, I don't blame but, you. However. That does uh, bring an end to the podcast. So thanks for joining me as ever, mate. And uh, no worries, if you yeah. are listening to us on YouTube, please like, subscribe and comment for your thoughts below on the topics we've covered today. And if you're listening to us on any audio platforms, please leave us a nice review and pass on the pod. You can also follow the podcast on social media on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at Chet Reach Pod. And you can follow Sud on, in- uh, on Instagram. You definitely can't follow Sud on <laughs> no, there. No, you can't follow me on no, Instagram. No, no. You can follow no fake Sud. But, um, no, probably. Yeah, there probably is one out there. But uh, yeah. yeah, you can follow Sud on social media. Where can people find you, mate? So it's just on Twitter for me, as usual, at David Tenspud. Lovely stuff. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram, at Leld, L-E-L, 3Ds, at a 9 the M for Instagram. Anyway, as I mentioned before, mate, thanks for joining us. And yeah, uh, no worries. we'll be back next week to discuss some more gaming news. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you.